Hi, this is Dr. Bahaudin Mushtaba from Nova Southeastern University's H. Wayne Heisinger School of Business and Entrepreneurship. The university is located in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, in the United States. The research I'm going to talk about is basically employee willingness in ethics policies uh, that is co-authored with Dr. Frank Cavico, who teaches law and ethics at Nova Southeastern University's H. Wayne Heisinger School of Business as well. Healthcare costs, as you know, in the U.S. is rising now. So many companies are trying to get their employees to become healthier in order to reduce uh, the uh, cost associated with obesity and uh, chronic illness. Some companies are utilizing the incentive-based approach, or what we call the carrot approach. Others are using the stick approach. In other words, they're uh, imposing penalties on their employees to get healthier. Unfortunately, it seems like one in four Americans aged 18 uh, years old and above seem to be defined as obese. That is, about 66 million Americans fall in this category of obesity. And obesity is usually defined as being about 30 pounds overweight. So as a result, 30% of adults uh, seem to have high blood pressure as well as 10% uh, have diabetes. So this is unfortunate. And what's interesting is that as technology becomes smaller and smaller, we as human beings seem to get bigger and bigger, and that's not a good trend for us, obviously. Because the average cost to treat illness in chronic uh, diseases caused by, caused by inactive or sedentary lifestyle uh, appears to be at about $1,000 per year uh, for a family in the United States. There are about 58 million uh, working adults with chronic illnesses. These chronic diseases have become a major burden, obviously, in the U.S. economy, which accounts for uh, severe disability in about 25 million people. Treating chronic illness is estimated to account for about 75% of the national health expenditure, which obviously is very high. And many estimated the primary causes of chronic disease in the United States, at least, is inactivity, poor nutrition, tobacco use, and frequent alcohol consumption, uh, which obviously causes all these problems. About 40% of all deaths in the American society are premature and often due to unhealthy or sedentary lifestyle uh, because of use of tobacco, because of improper diet and misuse of alcohol and other drugs, as well as accidents and so on. So that's kind of unfortunate. The carrot approach that's being used by companies in this scenario, many employers are offering incentives for employees to join a wellness program where they exercise regularly and to meet certain health care standards. About 90% of the American uh, companies with 200 or more employees offer some type of a wellness program. So that's a good thing because the trend is going the right direction. The care of the approach used by companies is to reward employees who are effectively dealing with these chronic problems that are caused by unhealthy lifestyles. For example, employers can reduce premiums for overweight employees who regularly exercise in a gym or uh, who meet certain weight loss goals. So it's, it, it's a way of encouraging them. Some of these companies are Safeway, for example. Safeway offers reimbursements to employees for meeting blood pressure, cholesterol, weight, and tobacco cessation goals. IBM, a big company, again, has a healthy living rebate program which offers financial incentives to employees who do well in uh, health areas such as physical activity, um, eating healthy, uh, managing their weight, clinical preventive care, and even children's health. The stick approach, which is basically a penalty imposed on those who are unhealthy, is also being used by employers who obviously have huge costs. So some employers who are not satisfied with the results of voluntarily wellness programs are imposing these penalties. And obviously, uh, it, it is not the ideal to impose penalties, but it's something employers uh, feel as though they need to in order to reduce their costs. About 20% of American firms tend to impose negative consequences or sticks uh, on employees if they do not utilize health awareness tools that companies actually provide. Walmart appears to be one of these companies. They impose a $2,000 surcharge for tobacco users. So if you're smoking tobacco, obviously you'll have to pay about $2,000 more on your premiums. Uh, the logic here is that tobacco users typically consume approximately 25% or more of the healthcare services than non-tobacco users. CVS Caremark, 
requires its 200,000 employees to undergo screening to record their weight, body fat, and also blood pressure levels. If they fail to do so, they'll pay an extra $600 for health insurance. Michelin North America, uh, employees who with thick waistlines, those who are over 40 uh, inches of weight for men and about 35 inches for women, they tend to have to pay up to about $1,000 per year more than those who are, let's say, below that. So again, even waistline makes a difference, obviously, in corporate America. There are ethical challenges when we're implementing any wellness program, whether it's the carrot approach or the stick approach. A wellness program that penalizes employees for smoking may have an adverse impact on, on certain employees. So if a male employee, let's say, smokes more than female employee, in general, then and that becomes a trend, that's a problem of gender discrimination. If those with disability, let's say, smoke more, and you impose penalties on them, then obviously it's discrimination based on disability. So employers have to be very careful uh, and work with their lawyers in order to make sure that they don't discriminate uh, on employees. That the legal side is one thing, but then there's the ethical side. So we have to also look at ethical theories. The teleological form, for example, tells you that the impact is greater for the majority of people, then you use that approach. That means it's ethical. That the ontological view of ethic is basically the non-consequentialism or the golden rule. You do something because it's a good thing regardless of the consequence. And when we apply the utilitarian view to carrot and stick approach, we notice that many more employees would benefit in the long term and the employee will not go out of business as well. Therefore, it's good for employers as well as employees to become healthier. Therefore, we could say that uh, employee wellness programs are ethical as long as they're implemented, obviously, properly. So whether you're looking at the carrot approach or the stick approach, the key is to become healthy, get out there and exercise, and obviously that's good for you as an employee, that's good for your employer, and that's good for society.